Magic! Hey guys, it's Jason Latimer, the world champion of magic. And today, we're gonna learn about center of mass and balance. And my buddies Ralph Macho and Billy Zabka from Karate Kid and Cobra Kai are on the show to help us with some home experiments so that we can show you how to be a balancing master with objects you can find around the house. Welcome to Impossible Science! So, what is the center of mass? I'm so happy you asked. First, let's define mass. Mass is the amount of matter or substance that makes up an object, meaning the center of mass, well, that's where an object's mass is balanced in all directions. For example, take a solid wooden baseball bat. Now imagine if we could tie a magic string onto the center of mass in this bat. That would mean that if we could suspend the bat from just that point, it will not want to tilt or rotate in any direction. That means we could leave it in horizontal position and it would stay that way. We could leave it in a vertical position, it would stay that way. In fact, as long as that string is tied to the center of mass, it would stay perfectly balanced in any angle we tilt it or twist that bat. So if you ever wanted to balance an object, well, all we'd have to do is support it directly above or directly below the object's center of mass. Now the center of mass for a symmetrical object that's filled with all the same stuff, well, that's pretty easy to guess where it's gonna be. Like the center of mass for a bowling ball is in the exact center of the ball. But what about an irregular shape? Home experiment time. Grab a broom, which is an irregular shape. Place your fingers on each side and slowly bring your hands together. And you'll notice that only one side starts sliding down. And then all of a sudden it starts teetering back and forth as the broom helps you find its balancing point. And it's not the center of the object. It's the center of its mass. But we can see the difference here. We can see how the mass has been distributed differently, but what if we couldn't see how the mass is distributed on an object? Well, then we can make that object balance in an impossible way. And to prove it, I've got the kings of balance on the show from Karate Kid and Cobra Kai. I've got Ralph Macchio and Billy Zabka online to show us how to take normal items and balance them in impossible ways. Thanks for joining me, guys. Ralph, you're gonna be going up first. I grab a couple of cups, all right? And you're neither gonna grab a bill. All right. What you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it on its ridge, just about a third down. Oh, just on it's about a third down, yeah, okay. Just a third down. And then you're gonna fold it up from the bottom a third. So now you're gonna be looking like this. So does that look something Perfect. right? All right, and then we're gonna place it on the cups like this. All right. Very well done. <laughs> Great, Ralph. <laughs> How did you do that the first time? I'm amazing. In this case, we know where the center of mass is when we look at a bill. We, we, we think it's uniform, we think everything like that. So I want you to grab one cup, all right, and we're gonna slowly pull it off to the side. Wait, what? Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and there's, there's no abracadabra, it's not, yeah, that's no, what's no, happening. No, you're no abracadabra, but there is a secret. See. What happens is when somebody looks at a bill, we think that everything is uniform. We think that the bill is the same all the way through. And honestly, because of some of the ink, it may not be perfectly balanced. But when right. you think of something being uniform, you, we call the center of a uniform object, we call that a centroid. And most people feel that the geometric center of an object has to be the center of mass, all right? That's not true. If we add an object, this dollar bill trick, Cost a dollar twenty-five. Gotcha. Okay, so that's so you're tucking that in there. So I got very yeah. So grab the quarter. Yeah. That's all it. you have to do to change the center of mass in front of your friends is to put a quarter behind the bill. So then when I folded right. it, I folded it into the bill. Right. So that's why I have it. So then so when now when you put it up here, the center of mass is actually over here, still being supported. So right. when you pull that out. Look at that, Ralph. You're a magician. Magic. No, it's impossible science. Now, it but Ralph, you can, you can actually take it to your friends. You don't even need cups to do this. You can actually fold it. If you're out in your, with your friends and you want to do this, you fold it like this, place it on your thumbs. Right. You can pull one thumb away. That's so cool. That's you, so cool. You got it? Almost, yeah. All right. Now, here's the best part. With the hand that's still touching the bill, grab the bill, turn your hand over. Let it drop. And drop out and give them the bill. 
Right, right. I'm saying, uh, <laughs> right. I'm going to have some homework. I love this. That's fantastic. All right. Now, Billy, in this one, we're going to use a pencil. Yeah. All right. And we're going to find the center of mass on a pencil. Take a pencil. All right. Take a paper clip, if you would, or in this case, a safety pen. And we're going to place it in right here. Now, by adding this safety pin, we've actually changed the center of mass. We've added mass to the object. And if I hold it just from right there, I can get it to balance like that. But wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. That's not working. Get out of town. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is exciting and totally frustrating at the same time. <laughs> All right, I need, I need, I need to understand this principle. Here we go, there we go, Ralph. Like that. Get out of here! <laughs> no way! Magic. That's impossible. Okay. It's like the crane kick. You yeah, right. <laughs> it really works. <laughs> it really, really works. So why, it's amazing that it's doing that and it's still, it's kind of moving, but it's still balancing. In this case, this really doesn't do much. This doesn't? No. So that maybe the hole in the table, is it stuck in? Okay, wait. No, but that's a good question. That would to totally work, Ralph. Oh, but yeah, in this yeah. case, we weren't trying to manipulate the center of mass. So rather than just make this a pencil, I've moved the center of mass by adding to the base of it. Wow. So I, ended putting, I ended up putting some weight. You can build these at home, and I'm just going to show everybody at home how to make these so you can balance anything. But in this case, I've moved the center of mass below the object, right, so right, right. hanging on that point. That's awesome, Jason, but I didn't even have to add that weight. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. You're really making it balance like that. <laughs> that's, a, that's an impossible science in itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, wait, no, check it out, actually. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I had time to, I figured that out while, you know, I was like, what could this use? I thought it needs a washer and a piece of wire. I thought of that real fast, so there it is anyway. So thanks guys so much for helping us to find the center of mass to create balance with our random objects from around the house. So now that you know this, you can go and use the techniques from the pencil with your toothbrush or a box and change the center of mass to actually balance items around the house. And you can get anything to work. What? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> a toothbrush, pencil, a card trick, and a dollar bill. Amazing. That's incredible. Okay, so now we know that any object will balance as long as its center of mass is being supported from directly below or being suspended from directly above. And if we really want to blow everyone's minds, well, we just have to secretly move the center of mass from where people think it would be. Washers underneath the pencil was a great idea because the center of mass is directly below the point of support, underneath the table. And the quarter in the bill, well, the quarter was so much heavier than the bill that the quarter moved the center of mass all the way to one side. So look around the house. You might be able to find some empty items that you can put stuff in to move the center of mass. And have fun with it. Well, check it out. A quarter. If you like learning about the impossible, let me know by clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions or topics you want to learn about, let me know about them in the comments below. Because you might be wondering about a question no one's ever asked before. And the right question, well that changes everything. Have you ever wanted to break an object with an invisible force? Yeah, me too! Welcome to Impossible Science. Hey guys, it's Jason Latimer, the world champion of magic. Now, what you just saw was an illusion, but it got me thinking, how can we actually break an object with an invisible force? So today, we're gonna learn about air pressure, and we're gonna do it with your favorite stars from Cobra Kai and Karate Kid. That's right, Ralph Macchio and Billy Zapka are coming on the show to show off our karate chopping skills to break boards with nothing more than air. Okay, before we get into breaking boards, I have a great experiment for you. Take a piece of paper, cut it two inches by one inch, give it a little bit of bend right there, and I'm gonna place it on the table, and that bend helps it stand. Now, I'm like three, four feet away from this. I can't even touch it. It's probably about four feet. I'm going to see if I can focus my energy and knock that piece of paper over. I'll see if I can karate chop this. I'll try it again. This time I'll just do it one handed. <laughs> mm. 
not a magic trick. It's science. What's actually happening is my last movement, I'm using my right hand. It actually starts at my left shoulder and comes across the table. So by using my right hand with my left shoulder, by going like this, I'm actually forcing air across the table and that's what's knocking the piece of paper over. Now what you can see is that air acts like a fluid. Well, it's got a current, uh, it's got a wake as you walk through it, and just like a fluid, it has weight. In fact, air is heavy. Even though we don't notice it, the air molecules around us have weight, and that weight adds up. Imagine a column of molecules that are stacked on top of each other for roughly 300 miles into the sky. The molecules at the bottom have all the weight of the molecules above them pressing down due to gravity. This forces the air molecules at the surface of the Earth to be tightly packed together, resulting in what we call high pressure. The molecules at the top of the column, well, they have less and less molecules above them the higher you go, allowing them to be more spread out. This results in what we call low air pressure. Down at the surface, we don't notice the air pressure because air pressure is equal all around us, up, down, left, or right, just like a fluid. And we don't feel the air pressure because the fluids contained by our skin exert roughly the same pressure outwards as the atmosphere does pushing back, and they cancel one another out. Pretty cool for an invisible force. Okay, even though you can't see it, this invisible force is there. And today I've got Ralph Macchio and Billy Zabka from Karate Kid and Cobra Kai on the show to show us how to use our karate chopping skills to break boards with air. Thank you so much for coming on the show, guys. Thanks, Jason. Here, Jason, thanks. So today we're gonna be breaking boards with air pressure. And I figured who better to ask to help me break boards than you two. Now, I'm assuming you guys had a little bit of experience in breaking boards. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm great with the balsa wood. But you know, when you break a board, it's really opposing forces. Like your arm is one force and the other side would be, uh, I guess it's a stand or a person holding it, right? Mm -hmm. I've mailed you guys a couple of boards. I need you guys to grab a ruler, okay? You got one too. Great, it's an elementary way of breaking boards. But the great part about this is if you were to put this off the edge of a table, if I were to swing my hand down and hit this board or this ruler right now, what would happen? You'd break your hand probably. Right. Now let's change it up a little bit, all right? Let's take a piece of uh, newspaper and fold it into a square like this. All right. Just one more time after that. Doesn't have to be tight crease, just lightly fold it because we're gonna unfold it in a second. But. Okay. Then if you were to place this on top of here and you're gonna hit it, what would happen? They both go flying. Give, give it a shot. So if I were to hit the ruler on the, on the edge, It'll fly up in the air. Even if you went for it fast, it would just launch everything out, in, out into space. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you this invisible mystic force known amongst us science magicians as air pressure. What we can't see is air is all around us. Take a newspaper and unfold it completely. All right, and you're gonna put the ruler uh, about four inches off the edge and give it a little bit of space and then place the newspaper on top of it. Okay. So here's the edge, here's the newspaper. Now what you can't see is on every square inch of this newspaper is a, let's say a square inch of air. And above that square inch of air is another square inch of air. And that column goes up about 300 miles. And if you were to add all that weight together, that's where you get air pressure. It's about 14.7 pounds per square inch. So that means that roughly 23 by 24 inches, this square has about 8,100 pounds of force on it right now. Actually, if you do the math on like a, a, a one square meter table, it's, a, it's about 10 cars are sitting on that table. It's, it's a crazy amount of force, but there's only one way to really see its power. And that's to, by creating a vacuum. When you create a vacuum, that's when the air pushes down on it. Now you need to get it as flat as you can and you don't want it to buckle over the, over the top of this ruler. It's gonna, because remember, it's, it's gonna exert force in all directions. Okay. Right. So if air gets in underneath there, there's gonna be pressure pushing up. So we really want it to be as sealed as possible. All right, so here it is. Nothing holding this down but air. When this gets pushed down, it's gonna lift up on the paper. Right. That, that momentary suction is gonna create a vacuum and air pressure will push it back down. And that should be more than enough to crack that ruler. But the real secret is, if you do it slowly, air is gonna get in. And if air gets in, it's not gonna work. You're gonna go over to the edge of your table, 
and you're gonna karate chop the edge of this ruler. Hard and fast and all the way through. Ready? One, two, three. Bingo. There we go. The crazy thing is, you can see this force against larger items. Now, this is this is 3 16th pine. Wow. All right, I'm gonna place it underneath here again. Okay. This flat here. Yeah, yeah, you don't want the air on the bottom of this too. Let's see if I can get this to work, ready? I believe in science, so I gotta do this, right? What, two, three. Very impressive. Fun. Who needs karate when you can just use a newspaper and break board? <laughs> right? Well guys, thank you so much for joining me on the show and helping me break boards with air pressure. Thanks for the lesson, this is awesome, man. Once you master air pressure, you will have an invisible force at your fingertips. And if you enjoy just making the impossible possible through science, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed the episode, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, stay curious, because the right question changes everything. You're gonna take a quarter and you're gonna balance it on the edge of a bill. This is not a trick. It's just a challenge that anybody can do at home. And you need a, a bill, you can use your 100, Ralph. Okay. <laughs> and Billy, you can use the dollar that you have. I got it, thanks. So if you if you fold it like this, all right? right? And you put the coin on the corner of it like this. The, even if the center of mass is not on that side of the bill or this side of the bill, if it's on this side, the coin's gonna tip this way as it balances out and the friction is gonna allow the bill to come out this way. If the center mass is on the far bill, it's gonna tip the other direction and slowly pull apart. And you'll realize, especially if you hold from the bottom, it gives a little more give in the paper. You can actually get it to balance on its edge, straight out, no trick. Go ahead and pull it, and don't drag it across the table. If you can, slightly lift it off the table as you're doing it. As you pull it tighter, and oh, tighter it to get it. Oh, I see, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Ralph's got it now. Oh, no. You can actually lift it up. I'm off the ground. Ah, uh, yeah, and throw the kick. Throw the kick. Wait, look at this. Wait, I'm very proud of myself. Billy, myself. Billy, Ralph's got it. I got it too. It's off the ground. That's all done by finding its own center of mass as you pull those apart uniformly.